Okay, welcome to our endgame class. It's freezing outside, so people are inside. Although it's also freezing in here, so I don't know. The truth hurts. As you all know, some of them actually know it this time. Um, the Tata Steel tournament's going on. Who's in first? I'll accept two answers because it's a tie. You know who's in first? No, you don't. There's no. Okay, yeah. Right? And who's the other one? No, nothing. He won his first two games and drew his next two games. Anybody? He's known for drawing all of his games. Oh. You. Gears. Good job. Yeah. Okay. Like he lives in the same house as me. Okay. <laughs> so Gary and Nander tied for first. Who's tied for 11th? I'm mentioning it because it's surprising. Magnus. That would be surprising. Fabiano. Yeah. No, Magnus is tied for third with everybody. Everybody who's there. And last place is 14th place all by herself. Ifan? Yeah, I saw by herself. Yeah, Ifan. And now we're going to see why. Okay, and then when this video is shown, then she'll have won the tournament. Yeah. Okay, so for some reason, when Judah Polgar was good, she played like a, not a tiger, because Anand's the tiger. Not a lioness, that's sexist. Um, she played good, and she played aggressive, and she played raw, and she played to win with black. Ifan used to play like that, and now that she's really high rated, she plays very timidly, which isn't good against these guys, so she's losing a lot, which isn't good. Now, first game that I want to look at, because this is an endgame lecture, and I already showed this on Sunday, but you didn't watch that lecture either, so why should I bother with that? This was played in round one, and, <clears throat> and Ifan played king c8. Now, when you guys analyze with computers, which you don't do, but if you did do, it would say equal. But that doesn't mean the position's equal. That means if both people play absolutely perfectly, it's a draw. But usually one side's trying to win. One side can play any move and draw. The other side has to walk the tightrope. So here white's better because white has two pawns on the fifth rank. Those are close to promoting. And black is not promoting ever. And so since one of the, well, both of the pawns that are closest to promoting are on the outside, it's nice to have white here. And since you can never win a queen upon ending, except for the later ones where I'll, I'll change my rules, um, because of perpetual check, Geary played queen f6. This actually goes from white having a small advantage to totally equal. So Geary was happy. No, nothing. Man, there's a lot of good Geary jokes, too. Okay, for example, <clears throat> on Twitter, after Geary won this game and the next one, Carlson tweeted, Geary is two out of two. No, not two draws, two wins. Huh. No, he's trying to, trying to get him there. <laughs> okay, and they traded queens, and this is a drawn king and pawn end game. King and pawn endings are no notoriously tricky, and one of the reasons is people don't understand that they're tricky. Like, oh, this is an easy win or draw, then they play them wrong. Nothing is easy. Now, normally, black would be better because black takes this pawn, and there's no way white can save it. King d7, king e6 takes. In this position, black cannot take that pawn because white will play b5 and make a queen. And so making a queen is good. If you're taking notes, write that down. So if black does this, then white plays b5. In fact, after king e6, white plays b5 and wins. Okay, so Geary realized, I'm not going to lose my f pawn, but if somebody queens, like me, then that pawn's pretty close to queening. So I like that. And in fact, in lots of end games, bishop and pawn, knight and pawn, rook and, doesn't matter, when pawns are blocking each other, for example, it's usually good to have the advanced one. Then if somebody queens, it's you. So getting close to queening is nice. But it's still a draw because the computer says so. King d7, king b3. Somebody raise their hand or not raise your hand because you're not children. Right, Archer? And tell me why white played king b3. What do you think white's next move is? C4. C4. King c3? Sorry. Yeah. You meant c4, you said king c3? I like that. Yeah. Okay, c4, correct. Now, when you're a super duper grandmaster like these players, you know what your pawn is going to do, and then you're ready to meet it. If, white play, if it was white's turn to move, and white played c4, what should black play in response? c6, c6 correct. And it's a draw, because the computer says so. And unfortunately... Uh, e5 made a losing move here. The computer says all zeros, and after the next move it says like plus 40 for white. As I like to say, the truth hurts. Yeah. 
So the drawing move is king to d6. You can't play king e6 because you, you got queens. So you can't do that. Okay. So king d6, and then the, the engine says this is a draw. Okay. I believe the engine because the engine sees under moves ahead. Okay. And I think e5 knew that, but she misanalyzed, and I don't blame her because what she misanalyzed was pretty cool. Like it was easy to misanalyze it. Now, a lot of people complain that players today play the end game badly. What about those players from yesteryear who played the end game well? Capablanca, Korshnoi, Karpov, etc. Well, their name started with a K sound. That's not fair. Okay. Well, the reason is, and people don't know this, in fact, none of you are old enough to know this. Karen could know it, but she didn't play chess 50 years ago, but I did. Games used to be adjourned, confusing the audience. You guys haven't had adjourned games, have you? I have. You play for three, four, five hours, and you stop. Then the next day you finish. Well, obviously, if I'm playing 12 hours later, and I can analyze the position with my 10 friends who are GMs, I can play the end game pretty well. You can't do that now. Now you're tired. You've been playing five and a half hours. You're post 2,800. So occasionally you blunder. So she played king c6, the losing move. White played c4. Now... I think Yifan thought it was a draw because she missed what happens later, not that she missed c4. I think she saw c4. Okay, and she played d4. And after king c2, she played king d6. And this is the position I feel, I didn't, I mean, she might have been interviewed and they asked her, but I didn't see that. This is the position where I think she missed white's move. Okay, if white plays the obvious move. B5? B, B5 is an obvious move also, although... Um, if you play b5, and I take, and you take, and I go here, we both have two connected pass pawns, so that should be a draw. Although, you could play, take on Passan and win. So does that mean king c5 is the right move? a6, king b6, and c6? Hmm, that doesn't seem good either. Confused. Easily confused. There, there. Hmm, why doesn't this win for white? There's a reason, I just don't know what it is. Uh, I think this I think this wins for white. It definitely wins for white. I guarantee it wins. I don't know the answer, but I know it wins. So we'll put the kibitzer on so I'm right. Good. I'm incredibly right. Yeah. And well, king, so this is the only move. This is the only move. This is the only move. Isn't white winning here? I guarantee white's winning here. Okay, and white's winning. So... So b5, b5 does not win, but I don't know why. Why doesn't b5 win? b5 looks like it wins. Oh. All right, you guys tell me why b5 doesn't win, because I just figured out why. Horrible. Take, take. Yeah, take, never trade. Rawr, never trade. That's the problem, c5. And b6 is a dead draw, because we both have a passed pawn, so nobody can do anything. And I think this loses. I think now black's winning. That loses? Oh, yeah. yeah. I guarantee black's losing, even though I'm probably wrong. Or black's winning. Maybe white can draw, but I doubt it. Can he draw? No, he can't. So black wins, because I said so. Come on. There you go. Good computer. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. And then, okay, so c is a draw. And like commits it to make sure it's a draw, and it's a draw. Hooray. Okay. And the obvious move isn't b5, but it was better than the obvious move I thought was obvious. So it shows you what I know. <clears throat> the obvious move is king d3. Black plays the obvious move. C6. Are you hanging the pawn? King no, I'm sorry. King, king, king e5, I queen. I just queen. C5. C5, yeah. And if you take, you lose. Now it's white's move. That's unfortunate. And what's that called? Zoom's along. What were you saying? Well, you don't take, right? Right. You would play b5, and this has to be a draw. It has to be. It better be. It better be a draw. Yeah, it has to be. King d5 loses? Really? Oh, because after a6, I queen. Oh, okay. You can't stop my pawn. Yeah, so this is a draw, king c7. King d7 loses? Really? I'm surprised that this loses. Okay, but this draws. Surprised. Okay, we both have two pass pawns, so it's a draw. 
So I think Ifan realized king d3 was a draw, and her opponent did not play king d3, and her opponent did not play b5. What did he play? King d2. King d2. And the difference is, if you play c5, I said if, and then I take, and you take, now it's black's move. The, the truth hurts. Yeah, that happens later, too. Yeah. So I think Ifan just missed king d2. So she tried to lose it. She tried not to move. If you move your king to the c file, you can't play c5, so I just play king d3. Move your king to the e file, I play b5 and queen. If you play king d7, I go take your pawn. So she played c6, waiting for king d3, and he's like, no, nope, not yet. Your move. And now she can't move. Also, you could have played king c2, which is what I would have played, because I'd be afraid to go that way. Yeah. Yeah, if you play c5, I take and play king d3, and it's your move. Yeah. So she went back. And this is funny, because here he did, like, weird triangulation stuff. But, like, just play normally would win. But weird triangulation stuff is funny, too. So yeah. black yeah. F, F6 would be losing, too. If you if you you mean moving the king there? Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you go here, this queens. That goes up. Yeah. As soon as you go there, yeah, I queen. Yeah. That pawn on a five is good. Yeah. You got to keep an eye on it, even though you don't. You still have to. Yeah. So I I think that she analyzed uh, king c six, c four, d four, king c two, and didn't see king d two. She thought it was fine for her, and then she was like, oh, king d two. Okay, I lose. Yeah. The truth hurts. Because white has a black has a lot of issues, and black has solved them all, but black has to move, and then you ruin something. And king on d6 is perfect, so if black could pass, then then she could draw. So Geary won a game. I, nobody could believe it. Okay. Then he beat Kramnik the next round. Huh? Okay. Next was Adi Bond versus Carlson. Now I've been making fun of Magnus for I don't know about a year. I make fun of somebody. Okay. I try to make fun of everybody. And everybody's like, Magnus, and they start crying. He's the best. Okay, Magnus is the highest rated. How's his rating done the last five years? No good. He was like 2880, and then he went down to like 2810, and then he's like hovering in the 2820s and 30s, and he just stays there. And most of these guys would like to win these tournaments. There's like Kramnik and Geary and Anand, and those are the weak players. Okay, so when you win those tournaments, that's pretty impressive, right? When's the last time he won one of these tournaments? Nobody knows. The last time he won a round robin where everybody was good was 18 months ago. That's a long time. What does he win? He won the World Blitz. He wins online, which who, you were telling me about that. Mm -hmm. And online is good. Yeah, probably cheating. <laughs> he didn't beat me online. So he's the best player in the world, but he's not doing anything like shocking. How's he doing this tournament? One win, three draws. Tied for third. Behind a 48-year-old and on. Come on. So he's not very impressive the last two years. Between 2012 and 15, he's pretty impressive. And then 16, 17, eh. It's okay. Um, yeah. So this is the only game he won, and he won because of what just happened here. He's playing Adiban. Adiban doesn't know how to draw. He wants to win. He's like a very weak Fedoseyev. And when I say very weak, he's slightly worse. But with the same strength, actually. Um, Adiban won the B group two years ago. Then last year played in the A group, and they were going to pound him, and they didn't pound him. He beat Karyakin with black and so forth. He drew Magnus, and Magnus was losing. And he was black against Magnus. So they were like, all right, let's invite him again. Okay, but he doesn't like, oh, I draw the guy's higher. He doesn't do that. So in this position, it was when I saw this kind of position, I knew it was a scotch. And it turned out they played the four knights, then the scotch, so I was close. It looks like a scotch because of this pawn structure here. Yeah, you can tell. Okay. Anyway, and Magnus played bishop f5, and Adiba made the losing move here. So <clears throat> let's see if the class is better than Adiba. Did he make? Exactly. H5? H5. Wow. No, no. I mean, Bishop H5. Oh, Bishop <laughs> H5. Uh, he did not play that. It's probably better than what he played. No, it's not better than what he played, actually. No, it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not good. Okay, so what's the one move you don't want black to play? That's how you play chess. Bishop not, takes C2? Yeah. 
So what's the C3. correct move? C3. Yeah. C3, computer says equal. So it's a draw. It's white's a pawn up. Black has horrible pawns. White has horrible pawns. And probably would rather have black because this pawn might queen, maybe. And then, you know, the black rook can go here and so forth. But okay, horrible pawns. This pawn could be attacked. So, so it's a draw. And Adiban actually, I think, probably thought c3 was okay, but he played for the win. Okay, his move's terrible. Bishop f3. And his idea was, you take on c2, I take on d5. And he probably thought, well, if you trade rooks, my bishop's attacking everything. Rawr. And, black, and white's a pawn up. Okay. And so Magnus didn't do that. Magnus decided to get two queens. So he played. D4, yeah. Well, now black's probably just winning. This is a terrible move, bishop f3. What's funny about it is, is not only does it not defend the c-pawn, it allows d4. If black played d4 here, this would be hanging. So b bishop f3 is really bad. So he might have thought, well, d4, but look at my pawn. Right, he probably thought that looks pretty good. Although these two pawns, when you take this, that looks better. Yeah, he just misunderstood the position, I guess. So he went from like equal to losing in like one move, which is what he funded. And then like, wow, Magnus is great. And I'm like, well, Bishop F3 is ridiculous. C3 draw. What? But Magnus is great. Okay, so A5, rawr. Bishop C2. How did Magnus find Bishop C2? Wow. <laughs> what a great player. Okay, Rook C1. Now Magnus played well. And I hate when that happens. When I played Magnus uh, in the pro chess league, he played all perfect moves. So that wasn't fair. I complained, but they were all, yeah. yeah. Um, and I have like five jokes I can make. I can't make any of them. Damn. <laughs> okay, so here Magnus played the best move. And probably you guys wouldn't make that move. Um, black wants to get two queens. Then you'd have two extra queens. Yeah. White has one piece stopping them, the rook on c1. So Magnus played. Rook b1. Yeah, and now he gets two queens. Yeah. All right, now white has to be careful because all these moves look good. So there you go, he stopped the pawn. Oh, there it went. Bishop d1, he stopped it again. And then yeah, that's that was the that was the end of White's counterplay. And that was that that didn't last very long. Yeah. Terrible. Now if White plays bishop d3, which I assume he didn't, black would play. C2. C2. And then he gets a queen. It'll queen the other pawn if he wants. I guess I could play king d2 and you play bishop takes bishop, and it would take you a long time to queen. Okay, so he played there. That's the safest. Man, the truth hurts. And I assume like plus 40. Come on, come on, come on. You're gonna announce mate instead of plus 40? You're so mean. You probably will announce mate. Wow. Computer. Yeah, bishop takes d3 is the best one, man, it's harsh. Only two CPUs, that's why it's so weak. There we go. There's the plus 40, except it's more. Yeah. Okay, and White resigned. And then they're like, wow, Magnus is a great endgame player. And I was like, well, Bishop F3 is ridiculous. So, But I think another player in the tournament, like almost any other player, would have played C3. And I think very few people would be playing for a win with White there. Now, you guys are all in love with Magnus, because you can't help it. You know, he's all pretty. And you're like, well, you know... Everybody's playing for a draw against Magnus. Incorrect. Only you guys are playing for a draw against Magnus. Yeah. When you're white against Magnus, play for a win, because you're white. And then if you don't win, you don't win. So that's what Adiban's doing. He's pretending he belongs there. He's like, I'm top 10 in the world. Yeah. yeah. But, you know. So Magnus drawing a 27, 50 plus with black, he'd be like, all right. But against Adiban, he's like, okay, I can't draw this guy. So. In fact, he did that today against Geary. He tried not to draw, but he drew. Geary is, you know, put the draw on him. Okay, so that was draw bad. Him. Yeah, this is actually pretty funny. I thought it was funny. Ifan played bishop takes h4, which is fine. And we're going to take a minute because I'm thirsty. And I want an evaluation. Okay, and the evaluation, you'll say, like, it's completely equal. I would rather have white. I would rather have black. White's completely winning. Black's completely winning. Those are your possible answers. It's Black's turn to move. As far as I can tell, material's equal. 
right? Everybody has everything, everybody's happy. Okay, and nobody's winning material. So, yeah. So you guys look for a while. Let's see, Ooh, interesting. I'm guessing we're gonna get a lot of votes for a lot of different stuff. Okay, who says equal? Nobody. Who says white is slightly better? Were you raising your hand because you like put it down? No? No? You guys like put your hands down too, but you, yeah? Okay. Who says black slightly better? Okay, and nobody says anything else. Okay, so it's four to two. What? You can. That would be better than that would be better than your answer. That would be closer to being correct than what you said. Yeah, you're all wrong, and four of you were more right than the others. It's like plus a thousand for black. Why? You said black was slightly better. Yeah. Yeah. So I was also surprised. Now, the reason black is better, we've actually discussed in previous puzzles, the previous positions, but you forgot. Of all the pawns that could possibly queen, this is actually hard for you guys. I feel bad for you. Of all the pawns, there's 10 pawns on the board, right? Which is the most likely to queen? For me, that's easy, but it's well, not easy for you. Man, I feel bad. I shouldn't ask you such tough questions. What's funny, I think that pawn queened. Now, maybe it didn't. Usually they resign before A5? you queen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, A5, yeah. Yeah, you play B5, then you queen it. Yeah, white's never going to queen anything ever. Yeah. Also, black has great knights, and white's pawn structure here is bad. That's no good. You can't move any of that. Yeah. But it looks like it's about equal. Like, eh, nothing's happening. I turned the engine on, and it was like black's plus three. And I was like, the material's equal. What? I mean, I like black, but I didn't like black that much. Yeah. Take pawn, pawn takes, force. Yeah, you can't win if you trade everything. Although I like your variation. That seems good for black. And, yeah. And I don't know if it's winning, because after knight f4, I wouldn't play knight f4. You would? No, I'd move my rook. Because you attacked my rook. But I would take your horse. I would and take back. <laughs> I would take back. I have a pawn defending it. Mm. Yeah. Then these pawns are sort of weak. You're giving up the center knight for this knight on h5. Very suspicious. It's and the reason, the reason this is good is these guys are over here. That makes it extra good. So shockingly, Mama Jarov played. But that means it's not shocking. Nobody. Oh, sorry, black. Yeah, sorry. black. Yeah, yeah B five because queening is good. Yeah. And so he, she played rook a three. She didn't want to take and give him a protected pass pawn. Knight c four. Man, the truth hurts. Takes, takes, no, okay. rawr. No. Man, Bob Seeger approved, working on his night moves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the truth hurts. Check. D5. Well, the problem is I'm going to take your knight in and win. And if you move your knight, your g-pawn's hanging, your c-pawn's hanging. So she played for tricks, and she didn't realize. Tricks are for kids. Tricks are for kids, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mama Jaro's pretty good. He lasted almost 30 moves against me when he was white. That's pretty good. No, nothing. Yeah. True story. Yeah. Did I beat Mama Jarov? I forgot. Okay. Yeah. Probably like one of you doesn't even know that. Is it you? Yeah. Yeah. And you, also, you never heard of Mama Jarov. Exactly. Yeah. Also, <laughs> yeah, he's only the third highest rated player in the world. Really? Yeah. yeah. When I beat him in the Pro Chess League, the people who were commentating on the game, which I found out later because I can't watch the commentary when I'm playing, they were like, they like went off the air and they're like, what? It's happening. <laughs> they were like going crazy. Like, would Ben be wrong if this made any sense? Like, my name's Ben. His name's Mama Jarov. So that's <laughs> uh, another name's Shakriar. So that's I'm not beating a guy with that name. And where is he from? Exactly. <laughs> Azerbaijan. Never heard of that either. What? No. Well, you haven't. Good. That was good. Um, you heard of Kasparov? Yeah, yeah. You know where he's from? Azerbaijan. Really? Yeah. He's from Baku. B A K U. No, nothing. Seven trillion people. No. Is that true? No, it's from Russia. He's born in Baku. No kidding. Yeah. Well, every, everything was called Russia then because it was the USSR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He didn't know how lucky he was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then Archer's like the Beatles. I don't get it. Okay. So takes, takes, rawr. Two pieces is better than a rook, unless you guys had the two pieces. 
when GM have his two pieces. Yeah. Very suspicious. C3, because otherwise you lose your pawn. This is the only dangerous pawn, so the king stops it. See, I told you. I, I told you. So not resigning here is weird. Man, this is winning. I can't turn the engine on because then my computer will break. It has to be like plus a trillion. It has to be because that A pawn. Ow. It's got to be like a trillion. Keep going. It has to get to 10 before I stop because it's so good. The computer's like, ah, it's a little better. This is where I make my stockfish joke. This is why Alpha Zero beats stockfish because it doesn't understand. No, no, yeah, like a plus four. Alphas will be like made in 37 now. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, really bad for white. A grandmaster knows better than a computer how bad this is because we've lost these positions before the computer was born. We're like, man, this just loses. Yeah, this is really funny. I was playing Florin Felican. He's an IM from Illinois. When I say he's from Illinois, he's from Romania, obviously. And lives in Illinois. And I had this kind of an end game. I had two pieces for a rook. And I had like seven pass points. And every move I thought he would resign, but he, he didn't resign. He'd make a move. And the computer says like plus four, plus five. It was like this. And he, it's his turn, and he went like this. And I thought he was resigning. I thought, and he, like, when good players resign, they put their hand out. When you guys resign, I don't know, you throw the pieces in. Yeah. Wow. So he went like this, and I put my hand out to shake his hand. He made, he's making a move. And I was like, oh, and I put my hand back, and he went, eh, and he shook my hand. <laughs> so I made him resign. He was like, all right, I resign. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, only plus six, no matter how many jokes I tell. Wow. Okay, so king f2. Now we're talking a4. Now now we're talking a3. Yeah. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah, you'd like to play rook a1 so they don't queen, but then knight b3 check. And also... I'm going to play a2, then I'm going to play a1 queen, and when you take my queen, I'll play knight b3 check. Yeah, that's why he's 2800, and you're some guy sitting in a class. Yeah. 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 Man, it's tough. Yeah, and then she says, oh, I resigned. Yeah, not resigning earlier was weird. Yeah, that's weird not resigning earlier. Like, it's incredibly lost. Wow. I guess when you lose every game, you don't want to resign. You're like, man, this is, got to not lose a game. Yeah. And then who does she draw? The only player she drew. Close, similar, black against Kramnik. And he was better, but he couldn't win. She's too tough. Okay. Okay, Adi Ban again. So Gawain Jones, or Gawain Jones, shouldn't be in this tournament. However, he won the B group last year, so he's in this tournament. You win the B group, go to the A group, and get crushed. That's how it works. And you've never heard of Gawain Jones, or have you? Well, you haven't. Uh, you, you haven't either? You're my only hope. And you two haven't? You have? Yeah. I met his wife in St. Louis. She was in St. Louis for some reason. Like, I'm going to go on Joan's wife. And she's 2150. So she's not a WWIM. Anyway, um, he's a nice guy. He's like number three or four in Britain. Nice guy. So finishing last. Okay. So he drew round one. He drew round two against like 20. And then he won round three. So maybe he won the tournament. Then today he did not win. And he did not draw. Yeah, today he got crushed. Okay. And that's coming up later. Okay. So he played queen takes knight because I said so. <clears throat> okay, I ask you this question. Equal, white's better, white's winning. White's winning. Hmm? White's winning. It was a trick question. Black's winning. Who's, who's turn? What? Uh, black. No, I was kidding. Yeah, white's winning. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's funny. Whenever we see these end games like this, any end game, and people are like, oh, I think this and that. And I'm like, you're up two pawns. And I'm done. Like, when you're up two pawns, you win. If you don't win, it's because there's something weird going on. There's nothing weird here. It's just a chess position. If the guy's like a perpetual check, or you have a knight fork I missed, but it's two pawns up. If I could be two pawns up, I would be two pawns up. I can't, but if I could, yeah. So you're just winning because you have two pawns. Hooray! Yeah. Now, in this position, I was going to lecture to the class how safe White's king was. You could never check him. Hooray! And then uh, Jones is like, no, that's the wrong lecture. The correct lecture here is the I have more pawns than you lecture. Advance your majority. Okay. Obviously, white has more pawns on the queen side because one's more than zero. But also, this is a lot more pawns than that. Okay? 
So as long as black does in queen, which is obviously ridiculous, then I'm going to win. So he played, just pushed his king side pawns. He's like, man, I got more pawns than you. Yeah, yeah that's a lot of pawns. And the problem with black's position is, which is the problem whenever you're down two pawns, is all king and pawn endings you resign immediately. So for example, let's say you're like, oh no, queen f6 check. I agree with the oh no, I agree with that. You might go here and stop it, except you didn't stop it. Because this is a king and pawn ending, and the computer's gonna say like checkmate, or like plus 50. Yeah, because it's the most winning position of all time. Yeah. See, I was right. Occasionally I'm right. Yeah. Are you can announce mate? No? Wow. Not gonna announce mate? There you go. Yeah. No, I mean, this is so winning, it's ridiculous. I've never been so mad. Okay, everything's mate. Yeah. Okay, so when your opponents have two pawns and you, you can't stop threats because they just do them anyway, because that's unfortunate. Okay, so he played queen c4, and he gives him some checks because that's fun. Queen b4 defending his h pawn and defending queen f4 check. Nice. And then he checks him some more because that's fun torturing him. Yeah. Okay, now this was very impressive to me. Here white made a move none of you would ever play ever, including after this lecture. And the computer said it was the best. I was very impressed. A4? G4. A4? Oh, you mean queen a4. You're always tricking me. No, there's no way you can say the move because I said you would never play it. That would make me look bad. H5. Queen f6. Why do you guys always play the craziest move? Queen f6 is what everybody would play instant without thinking. <laughs> That's everybody. Yeah. Everybody plays queen f6. There's nothing wrong with queen f6. You said one that I would never make. It's not a horse mate. I would never make a4. No, a4. absolutely not. Well, queen f6, king e4, queen f3 is made, right? So probably king king g4 is better. Because then I'll get mated in one. And I force the queen trade. And Careful, you, you might get in trouble there. I, my past e pawn my queen. Well, you might win. Yeah. All right, now, only Karen can ask the, answer this question. Ready? Based on what I tell you every day, what should white do here? Now she'll get it. No, she will. Um, I'll push the arrow when she says the move. Well, move the king up. Where? Um, king, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm waiting. King G3. So even though I tell you all the time, I have to tell you I tell you all the time for you to find it. What? No, just, just play king g3 without thinking, okay. without me ever saying anything. Yeah. yeah. Like That's the best move according to the engine, and he played it. Because you move your king up in the end game. Now, I like your threat, because it's mate in two. There's no king g4. Yeah, there's no counterplay. Right. King g3 stops king f4, king g4, threatens mate in two. Now I can go check, and queen f3 mate. Yeah. That guy, see, that guy's not as bad as he plays. Yeah. He's like two pawns up. I can win these positions. If I'm worse, then <laughs> leave me alone. I'm worse, leave me alone. Yeah, king g3 is the best move. I was very impressed with my own teaching. I was like, move your king up in the ending. And my students were like, no. I'm not doing it. Okay, so king g3, the best move. Queen d1. Now you can't play queen f3 mate. <laughs> oh no, it's not mate. Okay, and then he resigned here because it's plus 5 billion. Yeah. If you try to go here, you remember from the Geary game what white does? H5. H5. Yeah, if you go here, that's not good either because c4, c5, c6, c7, or any legal move. Every legal move wins. Yep, F4 wins, H5 wins. Those are the two worst legal moves. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, King G3, the end of the game really fast. Because then you can't stop the threat. Yeah, it's harsh. Yeah. That was very nice. If you play King E4, I go check, and then mate, and then I win. And it's good my king's on G3. Yeah. King G3. Yeah. You all would have played that before the lecture? And you would have thought of it? Time, yeah. yeah. Would you have thought of it? Like, oh, king g3, my king's safe on h2. Rawr, queen f6. Rawr. Yeah. Man, queen f6 is hard not to play. It looks really good. My king g3 is better. It's like the backwards version of what you should play. Exactly. What? No, like you do a combination. If you flip it around, it yeah. really works. Yeah, I like doing that. Yeah. Okay. And Yifan lost again because she lost every game. And, except the Kramnik. And she lost to Matlikov, who you've never heard of. 
Okay, that was correct. He's number seven or eight in Russia, so that's not too good because, you know, probably number 30 in the world. But um, it was funny the way Anand made fun of him without anybody knowing but me. He was interviewing him because Anand beat him in the first train. He says, yeah, Max seems a good player. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah. Man, if I'm told I'm a good player, that's, that's the biggest insult ever. Okay, so, um, yeah. One thing I teach a lot is that when you sacrifice an exchange, it's not a sacrifice, and that you're not allowed to sacrifice. Man, my students are confused. So you can't give pieces away because then you're down pieces. So don't do that. And they're like, well, you said I can't sacrifice, therefore I can't sacrifice the exchange. And that's not a sacrifice. That's, that's an opinion. In your opinion, rooks are better than knights. That's your opinion. And in many positions, that's not true. So in the opening, a rook can't do anything. Rook's in the corner doing nothing. And your knight's doing everything. So I prefer a knight. In the middle game, eh, the knight's better about half the time. In the end game, now the rook's better. Yeah. So black's winning, even though white has the greatest knight ever, and black's getting checkmated, and black's up, black's down a pawn, white's, black's still winning, because he has a rook for a knight. Yay, rook for a knight. OK, so he played the obvious move. I'm not kidding this time. Black did. Bam. Okay. And uh, Ifan played rook to h8. Even though it's a8, rook h8. And rook takes g2. And now she. Is this where she made a mistake? I mean, she's losing anyway. Is rook, yeah, this is right. She checked. Yeah, this is where she made a mistake. Okay, what are the two most obvious moves for white? And I think you guys will get it. Archer. Rook h8. Rook h8, and what's the other obvious move? If you don't play rook h8, what's your second choice? Knight g4. Knight g4, yeah. One of those is reasonable and one is not reasonable. Uh, she chose the not reasonable one. The best move is knight g4, and the reason is, after king h5, you play rook g7 and try to take all the pawns. Taking all the pawns is good. Okay? And blacks may be winning, probably winning. Yeah, but ooh, maybe not. But a little, but instead she played rook h8, which is really bad. And rook h8 has one idea, which is rook h7 mate. Now when it stopped, you're like, okay, I give up. So you can't play rook h7 mate, because I play g5 check, and then my king has g6, and then I just win. I'm up the exchange for nothing. Um, instead, her opponent went crazy. He went human crazy, not computer crazy. Humans are afraid. You guys are like, oh no, rook h7 mate. How do I stop that? Well, after g5 check, you'll never get mated because your king has g6. So black's just completely winning. But he was very afraid of getting mated. So he simplified to an easy win, except for the easy win part. So he checked and took that knight. He's like, I'll win this easy. And then there's no mate threats. Well, now he's not the exchange. What? Copy up the exchange. King g5, you take all the pawns. Take on f6, take on h3. Well, if you play rook takes h3, which most of you would play, then what do you do here? Yeah. Also, are you better here? I don't know. I guess black's better, I guess. But it should be a draw, I'm guessing. Yeah. So he played king g5. And he's like, I'm a pawn up, and the h pawn is weak. So I'll win. And he was right. All that happened. And now everybody blundered. It was very funny. White has to play h4. The reason is very complicated. And she played rook h8. Black has a very simple win here. And I understand missing it. I understand completely. I would also miss it. But I really, like, I really enjoyed it. I really appreciate the computer telling me the win. The winning move is c5. This looks absolutely ridiculous. Because when there's fewer pawns on the board, it's a draw. The point is, if you trade, well, if I play here, I win. So you should trade. Now it's two against one, which is normally a draw. However, black has the unstoppable rook h5. And the engine just gives the h pawn away and plays rook and two versus rook, which is a win. That's funny that you can't do anything about rook h5. The truth hurts. And I don't, I mean, he didn't see that. And if he did see it, he would have done it because, well, yeah. Um, but I understand him not seeing this line because two against one is usually a draw, but the king isn't here. 
the king is really far from the h pawn, and I have a threat. So, yeah. Okay, so he didn't do that. He played king g5. And he played, and she played king e5. So in this position, I believe king d3 is a draw. I think the black actually can't win here. And the computer says black's better, but not winning. And usually when it's winning, it says winning. It says, okay, plus five. And, yeah, and after king e5, it, it shoots up to like completely winning. So I understand king e5 because you want to activate your king. Unfortunately, you're losing a tempo because you're not attacking the rook. King d3 attacks the rook. And when black's quitting his f pawn, the white king can't do anything about it. It's unfortunate. And the king on e5 itself isn't taking all of black's pawns. So, you know, that's too bad. So king e5 loses for sure. And king d3, mm, unclear. Yeah. f5, rawr. Yeah, that's too bad he played f5, f4, f3. Now, white would still win if Nakamura was black because it would be f1 equals knight. I just watched that video again last night. It was like on my Facebook feed somehow. You know what I'm talking about. And you do. And you guys are like, what? Right? You know what I'm talking about? Mama says black Yeah, Nakamura was playing Mama Jarov in a like rapid game, and they both had no time. And the game was a draw. And actually, I read a very funny account of this last night I never heard, which might be which makes Nakamura look less bad. So Nakamura can promote to a queen, his opponent takes it, and it's rook against rook, dead draw, and they agree to a draw. Instead, he promotes to a knight. And then it's still a draw, but he's worse, and he lost. And somebody said he promoted to a knight because they had no time on their clock, like seconds, and the knight was right there. So he, like, put the knight there because it was there, and, like, he, like, where's the queen? And lose on time. So if that's true, then that's reasonable. Not, like, just to be silly. Sure. Right, there could be that happened. There was a knight on the edge of the... I guess, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway, no more money promotions. H5. If there's no pawns on the board, it's a draw. So when you have less pawns in an endgame, get all the pawns off the board. That was funny. When Ifan lost to Mama Jarov, she played d5. She's always playing crazy pawn moves. But check. Takes. Get rid of the pawns. Man, the truth hurts. No making a knight. Man. Maybe it's a draw now. All right, somebody play black. Rookie one. <laughs> Rookie one. Rook f five check. King g three. I offer a draw. Rook takes f seven two. Draw. Then d six. Or d six right away. Yeah. This. Bam. Uh, hooray! Hooray for me. Moving to king g3 right away. I heard king g3 right away, and Archer said king g4. I like them both. I prefer king g3. King g4 looks like it might win. King g4 has to win too, right? They both have to win. Yeah. And he played king g3. Okay, does king g4 win? I'm going to say yes. All right, everybody's right. Yep. Yep. You got to be careful. You make one move and you go from winning to drawing. Yeah, now you're going to make a queen. Making a queen is good. Yep. Now, actually, this is interesting. This isn't particularly interesting. She resigned here. But, like, imagine this position. Okay, and imagine, like, this pawn was here because I said so. So let's put it there. Here, here. See I, I put, see, I put it there. That was good. What do you guys think? We can vote. Black to play. Black wins. Black wins. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? White wins. Yeah. Yeah. So there's eight possible pawns that could be on the seventh rank. Four are a draw and four lose. These four are a draw. And these four lose. That's one of the losing ones. And the reason is stalemate. There's no stalemate here ever. You can't even imagine one. When the pawns are over here, there's stalemate everywhere. The way you win this endgame is eventually you play this check. 
And if the king goes here, you take the pawn for free. And when it goes in front of the pawn, black moves his king closer. But if the pawn was here and you did that, I could play king to the corner and you have to move your queen to avoid stalemate. And here you can let the guy take the pawn. And then if the king's in the corner, it's stalemate. So there's some stalemate tricks, but now with a center pawn. So actually, even though this position could have been reached, um, it would be black's move here. And with the pawn in the sixth rank, it's always a win because you can't get close to queening. But so she resigned. Yeah. Man, end games are tough for Ifan. But okay, she was probably always losing that one. It's a tough end game. Okay, and last but not least, but least. And black played, or white played, black played. Bam! Good move, right? All right, who's better? <clears throat> this game was played hours ago. White. White's better. White has a passed pawn. White's king is better. Move your king up the board. And white's knight is better. Damn, it's harsh. Yeah. And if I count correctly, I'm not saying I do. But if I do, what was I going to say? What? White's up a pawn. So white has everything. Pawn, better minor piece, better king, past pawn. Man, the truth hurts. And Wei Yi hasn't won any games yet. And Gawain Jones, come on, Jones, hasn't lost any games yet until today. So rig g8, activate your rook. King e4, activate your king. c6. So in this position, you could take a pawn, but you wouldn't want to do that because black could play rook c8 and get the c4 pawn back. You could be like, well, don't I win a pawn? If black's rooks get active and takes all your pawns, you could imagine a scenario, or maybe you can't, but I can't, where black is taking pawn after pawn after pawn, and somehow white's a pawn or two up, and then black sacrifices his bishop, and it's rook and knight versus rook. And that's a draw. That's a pretty easy draw. So white can't trade any pawns. White wants the pawns on the board. And white's knight is great here, so taking that makes the knight less great. But king e4 is good for two reasons. One, I always espouse, and my spouse is here. I'm less laughter than I expected. He has a smarter audience. Um, you move your king up the board, but equally important in this position, and I have experience, bad, bad experience. My game with Priyadarshan from five years ago. Oh, man, I can't believe what I did. Also, I played a masterpiece before I hung a rook. Like, it was like a 70-move masterpiece I hung a rook. Um, in general, when your opponent has one bishop and it's an endgame, I would put things on the other color. And that's what white did. See, you thought I was kidding, but Wei Yi's not kidding. I don't think black's bishop is going to take those or put them in check or fork or skewer. If he was playing me, then he would. I had more time, I was winning, and I, walked, I put my king and rook on a line and he checked me. I mean, I had like 40 seconds, he had like eight. And when he had eight, he still beat me a rook up, and it was close because time situation was tough. Okay, so king e4, c6, trade everything. King f5, shocking, white's moving his king up. It's like I'm his teacher. Bishop e7, knight g5. Now, let's see who the smartest in the class is. This might not be the right answer, but it's the answer I want. Why did white play knight g5? It's the answer I want. Might not be the right answer. I think it's the right answer. King yeah, there you go. You got to move your king up the board. You can't move your king up the board. So now, now you can move your king up the board. Yeah, I, I would play that all day. I would. All day. King e6. Man, it's a good king. So when this king is here and this king's here, white's winning. I don't care about anything else. I have a king and you don't. I'm up a piece. So I'm attacking and you're in this ridiculous. Now, I believe, even before this position, but especially this position, if... Two normal people were playing, like Kramnik, Carlson, Anand, Svidler, like the top. The resignation would happen immediately, and before this. Okay. But, okay, he played Ricky 8. Come on. Are you kidding me? Ricky 8? Please? Come on. What? I'm so mad. Okay, so White's up a pawn. I'm going to say plus 5, and I don't know. I haven't looked. But I like White a lot. I like my king. Come on, computer, agree with me. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. You're getting closer. Alpha zero would have said plus five by now. Yeah. Okay, rookie is such a strange move. What's the best move? Moving the king up. Shocking. Except not shocking for me. But 
Anybody else? Yeah. Okay, so completely dead lost. Knight e4. I would have played king g6. Man, that knight's good on e4. Yay, king e6. Allowing discovered checks, because got to move your king up. Always play bishop f8. Now we're talking. And then the king gets the end, it promotes. Yeah. That's the 2800 rule. Yeah. King d6. Allowing more discovered checks. He's not really afraid of them, because the king just takes everything. G1, still not afraid of them. Still, he could take it with the king, but he's still not afraid of them. Man, the truth hurts. Oof. Man. Check. Now, let's see who the smartest in the class is. What did white play? I hope you're laughing at home, because I am. <laughs> Knight e8. Incorrect. I'll tell you why it's incorrect. I'll tell you why. Watch. It doesn't let me. It's illegal. Yeah. 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 The only legal move. Yeah. Yeah. But I think white's king is better than black's. That's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. You guys would take on e5, but that would leave the king further back. King e6. Yeah. And you got these two guys... And then, yeah, black, black's got nothing. So can you activate black's rook? Let's get into the seventh rank. Anybody? That's correct. You cannot. Yeah, you can't do anything. Because my king's on e6. Now, let's put the king here and turn the engine on. Probably black's winning. Probably. Yeah. Black's better for sure. Maybe white can draw if he's lucky. Yeah, maybe white can draw. Well, I mean, if it's white's move. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, if it's black's move. Yeah. Okay, so. Ha ha, h5. Man, that's mean. When you see a position like this, generally, like in any chess game, generally this is being outclassed. Because you resign before this because it's embarrassing. Like, you can't move. Like, it's embarrassing not being able to move. But he's like, ah, I'm, nobody knows who I am. It's okay. If it was like, you know, Kranich would be like, what? Why can't I move? Yeah, like, Tony has to play b5, then just resign, because it's ridiculous. But d6, now he resigned, because it's hopeless. He can't move. And eventually, we're out of pawn moves. A, a4, a3, b4, b3. I think if I leave it on for an hour, it'll announce mate, but probably just, like, plus 50 here. Yeah. I don't think it'll announce mate. I think it's too, too, too far away. But you can see the computer likes white quite a bit. Yeah, I should use this in a lot of my lectures. I'm moving your king up in the ending because black moved his king sideways. And then white moved his king up, even allowing double discovered check. He's like, move my king up. Rawr. He went to d7. Yeah. Yeah. All right, see you guys next week. Don't die on the roads. If you do, please pay in advance. <laughs>